well, that's lovely, but how did that get me anywhere? <laughs> and the answer is it's, it's gotten you pretty far, actually. So if we look at the definitions on the next page, we still want that average deviation. I mean, that's what we're looking for. So let's think about what we can do. We could divide, right? So we added up all those values, right? We took the value minus the mean, we squared them, we added them all up, lovely, and then we could divide by how many there were. Great, wonderful, we could do that. Okay, so if I take those values, right, and it has a symbol. It looks like an O with a tail on it, but it's actually a sigma. That's a lowercase sigma in Greek. So sigma squared would be, and then the sum we found to be, the previous page, 1756. That's what happened when we squared those deviations. You take the deviations, you square them, and you add them all up. That's what this is saying to do. Take the deviations, square them, add them all up. We got 1756. So we would take 1756, we would divide it by 10, because there were 10 of them, which gets us 175.6. You can check me on Desmos if you don't believe me, but it's true. All right, so then what are the units? What is that? <laughs> right? Okay, so let's think about this for a second. Let me go back to the table. If I look at the deviations, this is points and this is points, right? So these were both points. Now, it's not always. I mean, it could be degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Fahrenheit or inches and inches. It's whatever the data set has. So for this particular problem, this was points and this was points. I mean, I didn't bother to write them, but they're all that way. Right? So then what happens over here? You're taking these values and you're squaring them. So the unit is points squared. And if you're thinking, that's weird, yes it is. <laughs> that's the unit. Here, I'll make a note. And again, please, they are not all points like this. This just this one. This one was points squared. That's just what it was. And again, it could be um, inches squared, it could be feet squared, it could be dollars squared, it could be all sorts of things. Whatever the data set unit was, you square it. Okay, well if you're thinking, that doesn't have any meaning exactly. Um, that's why we don't generally use variance very much in a class that's um, a first level class. We we kind of talk about it like so you guys can see it and kind of know where it comes from. It does measure dispersion but its units are kind of useful, useless for us. So that's the population variance. And the units are right here. Points squared. Sorry, that got smudgy. All right, now, again, the units are weird. What are we going to do with that? Well, the units became weird because we squared the whole thing. So we have to undo the squaring. And the way to mathematically undo a squaring is to take a big square root. So that's what we'll do. So sigma looks like an O with a tail on it, but it's a sigma. It's like a loop. Right? If ever you're in Greece, that's the lowercase s. So it makes this sound, right? Like standard deviation. See, that's where they got it from. <laughs> OK, so sigma is the square root of 1756 over 10. So 1756 over 10. In other words, it's the square root of 175.6. And all right, so let me go to Dasmos just to show you guys how to do something like that. All right, so if I want 1756 divided by 10, there you go, I didn't lie to you. And if I want the square root of that in the palette, which I have down here, this little keyboard palette thing, the keypad, it's the one that looks like a check mark next to the pi symbol. So you click that, and then you can type 175.6, and away you go. The other way to do it is, and the way I generally do it, is typing SQRT. See what, do you see what it did? SQRT, it knows what I want. It knows I want the square root. So it just kind of turns it into the root for me. So SQRT, or hit the palette and get the check mark, right, the square root symbol. And I can see it's 13.251 or so. 13.25. It's close enough. All right. So let me write that. I'm going to put a squiggly equals there, an approximation sign, because it's not quite, um, it's rounded, 
right? So I'm choosing to round it to three decimal places. Its unit is the points. And that's better, right? That's good because that's a sensible unit that makes sense for us. So this is called the population standard deviation. And I'll be honest, most of the time I'm abbreviating in any way because, you know, it's annoying. But that's the population standard deviation. We usually do something like STDEV to stand for standard deviation. All right, but our data set wasn't a population, right? These two values are what we use if your data set's a population. And we didn't have a population. So we had a sample. So how do we adjust for that? And the answer is that we divide by, instead of 10, we do 10 take away 1. In other words, 9. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. So we're going to take, all right, so the variance would be s squared, which is 1756 divided by 10 take away 1, which is 1756 divided by 9. So I'm going to go grab Desmos and have Desmos tell me what that is. So 1756 divided by 9 is 195.1. And then for the standard deviation, which is my next step, I want the SQRT, the square root of that value. I can actually copy and paste the value if you want. Um, you could also just type the fraction in here, 1756 divided by 9, or what have you. So you get 13.968. Okay, so this was 195.1, one if you like it, points squared. Again, it has that weird unit on it. That's the sample variance. It's the variance if your data set was a sample. And then S is the square root of 1756 over 9. I, in other words, the square root of 195.11, which turned out to be 13.968. And that would have the same unit as our data set, points. That's the sample standard deviation. OK, so you might rightly be saying, wait, what? Hold on, what's going on? <laughs> so let me just back up real quick. OK, so we're looking for a measure that will tell us how far the dots are from that value. Great. We wanted to just add up the uh, distances, but it didn't work. So we squared the distances to add them and added those up instead. That's all we're doing. Then we divide by how many there are. Lovely. Then we got rid of the whole squaring thing. Sure. Then we realized, uh-oh, we don't really have a population. We have a sample, so we should divide by how many there are minus one. Let's not worry about where that comes from right now. <laughs> Suffice to say that um, n minus one, so you kind of see it right here, n minus one is called something. It's called the degrees of freedom. We'll learn about that a little bit more, or use it, I should say, a little bit more in chapter nine. But it's called the degrees of freedom. In chapter 9 as well, we'll see it again. Okay, so sure, we don't really know why we did n minus 1, but fine. Do we have to do this by hand again? And the answer is not for me, no, <laughs> right? So you can make StatCrunch do this for you, right? And that's lovely, you can use StatCrunch. Again, I have heard tell that there are instructors that do make you do it by hand, so we just have to watch out for that.